flight was cancelled again. Okay, hey, this is take one, I guess. I just got a really exciting email and I immediately knew that I want to film this whole journey. So I figured why not start right now. I'm actually getting a little bit emotional because when I first reached out to this organization, I just wanted to basically just say, hey, and I think you guys are doing a great job. Let me know if I can help out in any way. And a few weeks later, <laughs> I'm sitting here and I just got a confirmation email saying that I'm actually going to be able to join one of their expeditions. This is the boat and it looks like a real life pirate ship. This is Reykjavik right here and we're going to sail around the West Fjords and we're going up here to the other side of the country which is called Husavik um, and actually nicknamed the whale capital of Iceland. So yeah, basically this is just going to be the ultimate way for me to to learn even more and I can't wait to soak up all their knowledge and to see with my own eyes what we're doing to our oceans and how it's affecting a very remote place but I'm sure it's still very much affected since this whole world everything's so hyper connected. First night at the boat we're still in the old harbor of Reykjavik and the setting sails in about three and a half hours. I've just uh, slapped on a piece of um, uh, seasickness band-aid. I've never really been on a sailing boat before actually ever, so I have no idea if I'm gonna get seasick or not, but I figured I might as well be on the same side. Mm -hmm. This is my little cabin. It is super, super cozy. The main mast is right here. The lens is like the heart of the boat. I like that. Hey, number two. So far, so good. It's raining and a little stormy, so we have to, we have to um, change our course a little bit. But it's fun. It really feels like we're pirates out in open sea or something. I'm um, trying to stay away from seasickness. There's one guy here. Oh, fuck no. <laughs> I feel like shit. Totally. Literally. I feel like it so far. <laughs> Forget that last thing I said. So one round of you seems to do the trick. I think we're gonna move into some calmer waters from now on. So hopefully all of us will be fine. <laughs> You well, think I think it's... we should eat. It's very late. Yeah. So we will just basically stop now, eat, and then. I want to make a toast for the organizers of other missions. This is definitely, guys, a life changing experience. Thank you. Thank you. after a few rough days at sea. After uh, two days at sea and one day traveling, I feel pretty disgusting, so I'm gonna try and take a shower in my little bathroom. It's gonna be interesting. Shower was a success and that felt really good. Now I'm like, and it's uh, super sunny, so I'm gonna go out and hang out on deck we climb a mast, chill in the hammock, uh, pull some sails, we'll see. It's a great day on the sea. I'm sitting 15 meters up high on the main mast, looking down at all my friends down there, and having this view over the west fjords. I think I can get used to this sailing lifestyle. Okay. 
So we're out here whale spotting and I just saw my first Icelandic whale ever. Yeah. I'm pretty excited. It was a humpback uh, and you can distinguish it by the look of their fins, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, but it has like white patches on its fin. And we're standing out here on the lookout now because we think it's gonna come up again. Stay tuned! imagine what's been going on here. I don't want to imagine it, but these type of places makes it more real that they actually used to do this. Hunt for the most amazing ocean creatures and then just take them apart and I'm not sure what they did with all the pieces, but we can safely assume that it was for financial benefit. One of the big ones is the puffin colonies. Uh, the sand eels, which the puffins are feeding on, are pretty sensitive to changes in the ocean, changes uh, in the temperature. Mm -hmm. uh, but the puffins don't have that instinct, you know, to move. Yeah. You know, they're going back to the same burrow every single year. And so then the puffins are going back, but the fish, the fish have moved to, yeah. to a better climate. So that's one of the clear examples of Iceland. Also, even with the whales, you can see things changing. You know, 10, 15 years ago, it was quite rare, like in the north of Iceland, especially Husavik, uh, to see humpback whales. Yeah. It was basically all minky whales living there. And then it just started to change. Um, all of a sudden, the humpback whales started coming. Blue whales also started coming uh, because there was a shift in the food. And now, shift to the north has brought the large whales to Husavik. Yeah. Uh, but what will be interesting to see is if in the next 10 or 15 years they'll be gone because they will be further north, you yeah. know, in the Arctic. Definitely. So you can see things shifting north in Iceland. Definitely. Yeah. We just came ashore this beautiful moody morning. fishing boats. It's a lot of them. So right now we're doing a survey and we've marked up a hundred meters uh, on the beach uh, where we're gonna see how much plastic there is and measure it and that way we can get an estimation of how much plastic is on the entire beach. Stop. Can't believe I live in your thoughts. I think about you all the time, morning, evening, and midnight. Such a wonderful delight. Forgo, give up everything that I. But it feels great. <laughs> Somehow a week has passed by already and this is the last night of the expedition. I'm kind of getting all the days mixed up because there's honestly been so many impressions and I've learned so much and I don't even have words yet. I need to like sit down for a couple of days after this and just take it all in. So 
this has been so incredibly meaningful to me. And I just get all emotional just, uh, just thinking about it. And, and I feel so incredibly blessed to have been a part of this ocean missions. I absolutely love you. Oh my god, I'm freaking out. <gasps> he flew away. <laughs>